This is Anfisa from Retina Coach, and today I'm going to talk about the general principles of silicon oil injection in retinal detachment surgery. Silicon oil is used as an endotamponate in managing complicated or recurrent retinal detachments, where long term endotamponate is required. Other cases where silicon oil can be preferred over the gas are an uncompliant patient who will not pose the head after the surgery, or patient who for some reason has difficulties with head posture. Patient who plan to have high altitude travel right after the surgery and cannot wait till the gas absorption. And also patient with the only eye. But here is a catch. On the one hand, after the surgery, silicon oil and used refractive arrow can be corrected, allowing a patient to function even with the silicon oil in the eye. On the other hand, it should be considered that a second surgery is required to remove the oil. Multiple techniques exist for silicon oil injection, as well as for every other step of the surgery. First of all, silicon oil can be injected without direct visualization of the retina or under direct visualization using the magnification of the non-contact lens. Also, both techniques can be combined. Direct visualization of the retina allows absorbing the vessel's pulsation and also making sure that there is no retina slippage. In this video, I will concentrate on injection of the silicone oil without direct visualization. This is a case of the eye with recurrent retinal detachment, where silicone oil was chosen as an endotamponate. The surgeon performed fluid air exchange, retinal reattachment and laser, and now he begins an air silicon oil exchange. A vitrectomy system set on viscous fluid injection. Before injecting inside the eye, the surgeon injected some silicone outside to ensure that the system works properly and there is no resistance to flow. Three valve scleral cannulas were used in this case. The first for silicon oil injection, the second for air removal as the silicon oil is injected, and the third for air infusion line set on 20 mm of mercury. It should be taken into account that air escapes the eye through the venting cannula faster than silicon oil enters. Connected infusion line supports intraocular pressure during injection and prevents hypotony especially in the beginning. As the eye is filled with silicon oil, the surgeon gradually decreases the pressure inside the infusion line, reaching around 12 mm of mercury. The tip of the venting cannula is kept just behind the lens for proper air removal and good silicon oil tamponade. The eye filled with silicon oil until a meniscus of air appeared behind the lens. Intraocular pressure was assessed by finger palpation at the end of the case. The eye was hard, so some silicone was removed. Valve scleral cannulas can be vented using different devices. A regular cannula like in the previous case, a flute needle, forceps, or a special vent that you can see now. The advantage of this vent is that you don't need to hold it during silicone oil injection. However, while the eye is almost filled, the direction of the tip of this vent should be changed toward the lens to remove the remaining air. There are surgeons who do not use a venting cannula during silicon oil injection. But at the beginning of the procedure, they decrease the pressure in the infusion line to a lower value, for example around 10 mm of mercury, which allows air to escape through it. It is essential to produce a good feeling of the eye with silicon oil. Otherwise, while the air is absorbed and exchanged by aqueous, silicon oil will flow up and the inferior part of the retina will not be covered. But at the same time, the eye should not be overfilled because intraocular pressure can rise significantly. Some signs show that the eye is almost filled with silicon. The first sign is the air meniscus and the anterior face of the silicon oil bubble that can be absorbed behind the lens, as was shown previously. The second sign is the silicon oil flow through the infusion line 
because of the higher pressure in the vitreous cavity. When one of the signs or both are detected, it is essential to assess the intraocular pressure by finger palpation to ensure that the eye is not overfilled. As you saw in this video, usually the air is exchanged for silicon. Still, in some not routine cases, for example, in retinal detachment associated with a giant air, direct peripheral carbon liquid silicon oil exchange can be done. This technique will be shown in future videos. We invite you to visit our retinacoach.net website. Subscribe to our channel to stay updated on all our latest videos. And also comment if you have any suggested topics for future videos. Thank you for your attention.